Joining us now, criminal defense attorney Arthur Idali, been with us throughout the whole thing. First, just want to get your immediate reaction. The former leader of the free world tonight, a convicted felon. Yeah, it's, you know, it's not a, it's not a good day for America. I don't care how you want to look at it. Um, you could slice it up a lot of ways. I don't agree 100% with what the district attorney just said, because the judge, and we spoke about this the, the other night, the judge did not tell the jurors that they had to be unanimous that the false records were created to uh, affect the election. They could have said they were created to um, create this false 1099 that was created to Michael Cohen or state election laws. It was, that, that Once the judge gave the charge to the jury, Lindsay, I was like... All right, he's getting convicted because the, the judge really? made it. So prior to that, you thought uh, I thought it may be a hung jury. That may be a hard to decide because I was under the impression. And, and when I say this, it's not like I don't know the law. This is a unique case. This is the first time this has ever been done. Don't forget, you're talking about misdemeanors outside of the statute of limitations that are brought back inside of the statute statute of limitations if there's an underlying crime the to commit a felony. The judge did not insist that the jurors be unanimous on what that underlying crime is. He kind of gave them a menu. He said you could say it was to create tax fraud, it could be to create um, election fraud, or any other crime that would be uh, that could be a felony. So it, it was. There are real appellate issues here, and you know, after we hear about a conviction, everyone says, "Oh, there's going to be an appeal. There's going to be an appeal," and the majority are not successful. And I'm not saying this is going to be a successful appeal. But whoever the lawyer is who crafts this appeal, it will be real legal gymnastics. It will be the height of lawyering to really focus on the issues here and whether this case should have and could have been brought to begin with. So what, on what grounds would you appeal if you were actually Trump's attorney? Well, I can tell you the way Judge Mershon allowed Alvin Bragg's team to bring this case, there are other judges who I've spoken to who said, I wouldn't allow this to come forward. These are cases that are beyond the statute of limitations. But isn't this vindication for Alvin Bragg today that oh, 12 well, everyday New Yorkers as he well, described okay. them? Obvi obviously, it's a sense of vindication. Um, and I don't, I, don't, I don't want to make this too personal, but I lived this, right? So the Harvey Weinstein decision came down. He was found guilty of all charges. There was exact same press conference. The, the p witnesses who were there, and they had a press conference. And then years later, the Court of Appeals said... It wasn't a fair trial. And then the defendant has a day of vindication. I'm not saying that's going to happen here because it is naive to say politics does not play a role here. You're in a very democratic area. Um, the judges on the court, on the appellate division, I believe, are all appointed by democratic governors. To, to say that that's not going to have an effect, I think, is naive. If this trial took place in the county of Richmond, which is Staten Island, New York, I don't believe the same verdict would have been achieved. So, um, Look, Donald Trump right now is probably the most joyful of his whole team. I've been in the position to lose a big case. All the air comes out of your, your lungs. And, you know, it's, it's a sense of loss, a sense of failure. You're very upset. And on the, I've been on the other side, too. Right now, the prosecutors are in some room somewhere where no one can see them. It's very private, and they're celebrating. As they're allowed to, they worked very, very hard. They gave up weekends and birthday parties and all kinds of events to work on this case. These are what trials are all about. But as objective as I could be, someone like Donald Trump in Manhattan, where we know the jury pool comes from the voter logs, and the voters here voted for Joe Biden, I think, 83 to 17, you know, they had an, up, uh, an uphill battle to begin with. Okay, so July 11th is the sentencing. You were talking about appeals. Just want to put a pin in this for a moment. But sure. as far as appeals go... This could take years, as you know personally. Yes. And so then, it, speaking of this being political, it's kind of too late with regard to, as we've seen in the polls, about 20% of people who said that they would support Trump now as a result of him being a convicted felon. They're saying, ah, I might actually reconsider that. Felon. Yes, I mean, I, I, I am not qualified to talk about the, uh, the effects that this could have on an election, but I will tell you, I think the greatest challenge for Judge Mershon may be right now. What do you sentence Donald Trump to? Now, I will tell you this. It would be the height of hypocrisy, Lindsay, if the district attorney's office asks for jail time. This is a process. Even though he could. Up to Even four years he can. would be yeah, Yes, absolutely, game. he can. 
But this is a DA who has run on giving people second chances, on alternatives to incarceration, on basically anything but jail, even in violent felony cases. This is the lowest level felony in E. It goes from A to E. This is the lowest level. It's a paper case, meaning there's no violence. This is a, forget that he was the former president. He's a man who's almost 80 years old, who's never been in trouble in his life. Th those are just not cases where people go time, to jail. Let me just say, this right after we saw this every day pretty much he was railing on on judge mershon right he's called him a tyrant oh he's called him a lot he of things he now has the power to decide his fate and the, so there are a few options right we talked about potential for 4 years in prison home confinement he could do uh, community service probation what do you think is the most likely well, and if you were his attorney, would you have said, you know, maybe ixnay on oh, the I, insulting okay. of the, the judge? So, truth be told, I was asked to be part of the Trump team several different times, and one of the reasons why I wouldn't, and it wasn't the only reason, but I, I knew he would be a hard client, he would be a hard client to control. Um, I absolutely would be like, Mr. President, this is the guy who may sentence you at the end of the day. Maybe we should chill out, but that wasn't... He wasn't going to do that. I think Judge Mershon's going to have a hard time figuring out a sentence. Again, I, I don't think Judge Mershon is going to sentence him to any jail time. I think that would be ridiculous in this case. Um, and I, I, it would be a logistical nightmare. I, I mean, it could cause civil unrest. I just don't think... And, and I think Judge Mershon is going to ask Albany, the capital of New York, to show me the statistics. How many E felonies, which is this kind of case... Do people go to jail on? And I think he's going to find the answer is close to zero. So for him to all of a sudden say, on this one case, I'm going to send someone to jail, it's a big problem. I think he's got to come up with some form of community service that makes Manhattan a better place. So he might be like picking up trash. No, on the side I think of he's got to do something bigger than that. Like, I want Mr. Trump, I want you to come to me and you tell me how you could use your stature, your financial status to make New York a better place, whether it be for senior citizens, for children, the police athletic league, but something to make New York a better place. I don't see him telling the president of the United States when two Secret Service guys go to a park and clean graffiti. But, you know, and there may be a financial aspect, but I don't think there's enough finance, the judge has enough power to give a financial fine that's going to hurt Donald Trump at all. Last question for you. What do you think about, you have Michael Cohen, many people had been questioning his credibility, right? He had said at one point years ago, I would have taken a bullet for Donald Trump. Now, does it seem to you that he was the key potentially to his undoing? Well, it was definitely, and it was Pecker too. In other words, if I'm the prosecutor and I go to sleep last night and the jurors notes or I want to hear from Mr. Pecker, who was the National Enquirer guy, their first witness, they led with their strongest witness as they should. You only get one chance to make a first impression with the jury and they did with, it, with Mr. Pecker. And they said, hey, let's see if Pecker and Cohen's testimony when they read back jive. And they did, and that was, again, the support that a few of the jurors or maybe all of the jurors needed to say okay don't forget Lindsay it was acting in concert the prosecutor didn't have to prove Donald Trump did all of this they just had to prove that he had an agreement with other people to do this and the Pecker Cohen meeting at Trump Tower I think for the jury clearly that was a relevant point because that's the readback they asked for so if you look at it the first witness they heard from was Pecker and then the last witness they heard mm -hmm. from because that was the readback he asked for I could talk to you all night. Arthur Idala, we thank you so much. Well, this has been a pleasure for me. It's been a highlight this. covering this case and getting to know you and being having the honor of being on your show. Thank you. Thank you so much.